guys, welcome back to my channel if you're new here. Hello, I am Breathy and I'm so glad to have you guys. Um, don't mind my face, I went to the gym today and I kind of just threw on a little bit of concealer and bronzer and a little bit of lip. Um, so my makeup is not the best today, but I wanted to film an updated Q&A. Um, I just feel like I have a lot of new followers and subscribers and um, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. Um, on TikTok, and so I want to do like an updated Q and A, ask some questions, um, not ask some questions, answer some questions, and just kind of sit down and chat. So I just ate a cookie, and I don't like I don't have any like chocolate in my teeth. Um, but when I asked you guys what videos you guys wanted to see from me, a lot of you guys said sit down videos. You guys really seem to like those. Why is my necklace all messed up? Um, you guys really seem to have like the sit down video. Um, my last one was like the um, career update um, and you guys just had a lot of like questions. I know a lot of people had questions about that. I got a lot of questions on Instagram um, right after I posted that video and yeah, we have quite a few questions to ask, answer. Why, why am I saying that? Quite a few questions to answer. So I asked you guys yesterday afternoon on Instagram, ask me some questions and I got quite a few and then I also you guys y'all really the number one question I probably had wait when I say the number one question and the number one question I have is when is baby number three when's baby number three when do you plan on having baby number three um <laughs> plans for baby number three the mom Chris said plans for baby number three only because my baby fever is through the roof and I need to live through you um, but literally, when are you planning for baby number three? Are you going to have baby number three? When will you have baby number three? Are you going to have baby number three? Blah, 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 blah. Literally, all about baby number three. So let me just answer that first because it seems to be the popular question. I know I'm teasing you guys a lot with um, saying, like, I want another baby. I want another baby. I've talked about wanting another baby for a while now. Um, so <laughs> I would love to have another baby, like, right now like right this minute like let's pull this IUD out and let's start trying right now here's the thing I have two kids I have a two-year-old and I have an almost four-year-old the ages that they're at right now whew, they are a handful handful granted a newborn is like super chill and easy I mean at least for me yeah I don't I, I, at least I think a newborn is relatively easy. All they do is really sleep, eat, poop, sleep, eat, poop. But adding that to the mix of my already, already two crazy toddlers, I'm like, oh, do I really want to test myself right now? And to answer that, yeah, I do. I do. I really want another baby, like, right now. I'm just really scared to have another baby. First of all, they're expensive. Um... Thankfully, with my last two babies, I had, I breastfed them. So, I didn't have to, like, pay any money, like, towards, um, like, formula or anything like that. Um, diapers are pricey, and clothes is expensive, and baby products are expensive. I got rid of a lot of things, um, when we moved out of Colorado, just because I was like, I know I'm not gonna have another baby for quite some time. Um, so I got rid of everything. Like, almost everything. I still have Asher's old crib because I love that crib so much. Um, so I still have like that and I have, um, some like baby stuff. I have a lot of baby clothes still. I got rid of a lot of baby clothes, but I still have so much baby clothes. They're all boy baby clothes, obviously, because I've had two boys. Um, but I got rid of a lot. Like I don't really have any of like the baby accessories, like the toys, like the jumpers and all that. So I got rid of everything. Um, I got rid of like the baby infant carriers and I still have like everything like my baby wraps and covers and diaper bags um, from Kia babies because they sent them to me and I loved them so much um, and I knew I wanted to use it for the next baby so I kept all that stuff. I kept my pump everything like that because I was like mm, I don't know like by the time we have another baby will Cameron still be in the military? Will I be able to still get a pump through insurance? I don't know. So I did keep my pumps so I still have that and everything. But babies are expensive and you know, we're right now in the predicament of putting them even in daycare is expensive. Landon goes to a private school and I did talk about this in my last vlog about Landon's private school and everything and if we're even going to put them in private public school event, or not private school, 
private grade school eventually once he goes to kindergarten next year and everything is still kind of up in the air but it's just stuff like that that gets really expensive um land is preschool right now he goes to private preschool it is expensive we pay monthly um asher is still home because obviously i'm home so he will stay home until he's ready to go to daycare or not daycare sorry preschool next year and it's expensive and i feel like people have the misconception that the military like makes all this like fancy dancy money fancy dancy does that make sense it's like fancy money right everyone thinks we make so much money we don't camera does not make crazy money like like we have to live through each check and we have to be very cautious what we spend we can't just go spending all this money on vacations and everything and we are budgeting our groceries and stuff because obviously like we don't make money like that so thinking about throwing another baby to the mix i'm like am i really ready for this am i i don't know um i do know since i am staying home this is probably the best time to have another baby instead of waiting like two or three more years and then going back to work and then getting pregnant like i just kind of almost like want to avoid that so to answer your question we do plan on starting to try for baby number three by the end of this year. It can absolutely change tomorrow if obviously the way life is right now continues. Uh, food prices are outrageous. Cost of living is outrageous. We don't know what, what Cameron's going to be doing career-wise in a couple of years. Um, we just don't know. So to answer your question, we would like to start trying by the end of this year to hopefully have like a summer baby next year. We've got a March baby, we've got a December baby. We need something like in the middle. We would probably start trying by the end of this year to hopefully have a baby next year. Um, that is in the plans for us. But like I said, it can change. Um, I also don't want to put a baby into it selfishly just because I want a baby. Um, I need to make sure it's all, I need to make, we need to make sure if we could help it, that it's the right timing for that baby because we still want to give that baby a great life too, right? We want to make sure our boys are still well off and yeah, so hopefully by next year we'll have another baby. Getting Another question I got a few times too, stemming off pregnancy was, um, do you want the next baby to be a girl? So I think the reason why a lot of people are asking that question is since I have two boys already, ugh, everyone. I guess everyone always wants to have both genders and absolutely I 100% would love to have a little girl I forgot to light. I would <coughs> I would absolutely love to have a little girl since I have already had two boys I think having a girl would just be fun but honestly I think the only reason why I truly would want a little girl is for the sole purpose of dressing her um other than that I think what really is the difference while they're young? I mean, it's really nothing. Obviously, as a little girl grows up, you get to have all the girly things. But in reality, I mean, you want to lay right here? I think in reality, it's it's kind of the same. I would love to have a little girl, and I'm not going to say I don't care. Um, I hope my next one is a girl for sure. Um, I do have two boys, but then I always say and I say this all the time to everyone I truly wouldn't be upset if I was to have another boy uh, first of all I already got everything for a boy <laughs> but also I do love being a boy mom I never thought I would but I have enjoyed being a boy mom it's been so much fun it's definitely a little crazy sometimes and a little gross like I feel like boys are kind of gross sometimes but I mean I don't know I mean I think a girl could be like that too so um, I would definitely love to have a little girl, but honestly, only for the purpose of dressing her up as a baby, you know, like the pink and the bows, but other than that, I truly would be happy either way. Um, next question I have is, um, how do you keep your marriage so strong? I'm struggling. Um, so... I don't want to say this is the key for a successful marriage, my lighting, um, because in reality, all marriages are different, all people are different, um, compatibilities are different, the way someone, what someone wants from their partner, um, etc. But honestly, honestly, my marriage is not perfect. We have gone through it we have gone through it and honestly 
a lot of the times it's me um it's not Cameron he is he don't give a sh about anything he's just go with the flow he does what he has to do and that's it and then I'm uh, very naggy I want things my way I just have major mood swings um I have PMDD so around my menstrual I am very angry and sad and it really messes with me and I just lash out onto Cameron and for the most part he just takes it so it's not healthy um but I have a partner who is divorce isn't an option for him um so it's just it is what it is but I do think um the older that I'm getting, I realize in a marriage, in any relationship, it's never going to be perfect, but you do have to both try. It's not one person trying, one person's not. It's a constant battle of trying to make it work. Um, I think, obviously, if you don't give your relationship enough effort, it's going to crumble. Um, but I feel like it's also normal for relationships to have ups and downs. It's normal to have fights. It's normal to get angry. It's normal to get ticked off at things that they do. Like, I'm ticked off. I asked Cameron three times today to put out that trash. And has he done it? No, he left. And he still hasn't done it. But, you know, I used to hate when he's play on Xbox all night long. And I used to, I used to hate it. Like, hate it. And I've literally grown to the point where I'm like, I gotta pick my battles. I could have a husband that's out partying and drinking and hanging out with other girls and, you know, acting like he's single. Or I could have a man who's playing Xbox. And honestly, you gotta pick your battle sometimes, you know? Um, Cameron is a homebody. He enjoys playing. He plays with buddies at work. He plays um, with like his like friends from d different places that he's met people from back home and you know it's a stress reliever for him and you know after a long day of work if that's what's gonna help he said I have like this light that's behind me um if that's what's gonna help like de-stress him and you know then so be it I usually he's usually pretty good like on the weekends or his days off sometimes he'll play during the day but for the most part he just plays at night and usually I just take that time I'm like you know what you're gonna play Xbox I'm gonna get into bed I'm going to put on my Vampire Diaries. I'm going to watch some YouTube videos, take care of me, do whatever I want to do. And, you know, it's kind of like my own time, too. So he, that's his own time. And then I do my thing in my own time. And I think, like, you really need to just pick your battles. But, again, every relationship is different. You do need to date your partner. You do need to be intimate. Like, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, that doesn't make a marriage. But it does. It can really... Um, like make problems if one person wants it and one person doesn't or you know it's just, being intimate I think is also really important in a marriage but I think being intimate is really important I think you need to date your partner um I'm really guilty and I do tend to put my kids before Cameron and that's something I try really hard to be cautious and be mindful of what when I do that because they do say you're supposed to put your partner first your kids second because once your kids are grown up and gone your partner is not going to be waiting there after being on the back burner for all those years um but I try really hard to make everything equal but I do try to make my partner I, I try not to like be like oh no my kids first but I'm still really guilty and I still do it a lot but I am mindful that I do need to put Karen first sometimes to put things before my kids like going on a date and I always feel guilty for my kids that I have to leave them, but in reality, like, I need to date my husband like we dated before we had kids. So, different things work for different people. Therapy may work for you. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. It's, I, like I said before, it really just depends on who you guys are as people, how your relationship works, how you want your relationship to work. Everyone's so different, um, but I definitely think, like, you need to give your spouse the benefit of the doubt and you, it's a constant battle of trying to make it work every day. Like, it's not just something that's easy. Like, it just, you have to keep working on it. Um, so, yeah. How do you manage to stay so positive during a deployment? So, obviously, we went through one deployment, um, and it was a hard, like, I, I mean, I think for me, it all done? Okay, go put it in the trash can. Um, for me, I think it was really hard because... 
it was right at the start of the pandemic so everything was closed down everyone was quarantining everyone's like pushing back from each other and it was just kind of really lonely um but I think for me it was just really helpful that I had my two kids keeping me busy every day I also was working from home at the time so I kept myself really busy but I think also what really helped me was that I was able to call Cameron and talk to Cameron constantly um, not everyone has that privilege of being able to talk to their spouse in deployment, but that's what helped us. And I just feel like, you know, at the, end of, at the end of the day, like you have to stay positive because if you're not positive and you're giving that energy off to them when you talk to them, it kind of makes them like have a worse deployment, if that makes any sense. Um, you want to make sure that they're thinking like you're fine and dandy, even if you're not. One of those things where you just kind of have to stay positive. Um, I also try really hard to stay positive because I have my two little ones. I didn't want them to see me crying all the time. Um, but I mean, I don't, I don't want to say like I stayed positive, but I think you just need to keep yourself busy and not think about the negative and the bad. Just kind of keep thinking about the good. Think about the positive, right? You're going to see them in a couple months or you're going to see them in a couple days or, you know, count down. Um, but definitely keep yourself busy because I feel like it helps keep you positive. Um, do things to make them feel good, like fat boxes or like gifts or stuff because, you know, that may make you feel good. But I think the best way to stay positive is to be positive and just keep thinking it's almost over. It's almost over. And, you know, I think that's kind of, I don't know, that was a really bad answer. But that's just what it was. Did you always want to be a stay-at-home mom? Um, no. So growing up, I always thought when I had kids eventually that I would stay home for the first year so they wouldn't go to daycare when they were babies. And then I would go back to work. And that could have been the case. <laughs> when I had Landon, I was working from home three days a week in, in the office for two days. Then I ended up getting pregnant with Asher. So then I kind of ended up having to um, figure that out because that was just a lot. And the camera schedule changed, the camera deployed. But once I had Landon, it was so hard for me to go to work. I just wanted to be home with him. And I never thought I was going to get that feeling because I've always been so in that thought of myself having a career and making money and being a boss ass bitch, if I'm going to be blunt. That's what I thought. Like, I thought I was going to, like, you know, have my kids be able to give them this good life and work hard and give them, like, everything that they want, like, with vacation. Not that that matters, but that's just what I thought my mindset was. That's what my mindset was. But then I had landed, and I was just like, no, screw all that. Like, I want to be home so bad. Like, all I want to do is be with my baby. And I had to work. And I constantly felt guilty for wanting to leave that job. I just kind of kept on keeping on and it was just really helpful too that I only had to go to the office two days a week and I worked from home three days but then once I had Asher it was just way too hard and I was just like I can't do this anymore like I want to stay home and I just kept working because I was like I need to work and then once I got laid off I was like finally I can like be home and Karen was like yeah just focus on being home but then I kept thinking like I need to work like I need a career like I need money I, like, I need it. Like, I just, that's what I need to do. Like, I can't be lazy. And what it came down to was, I think being a stay-at-home mom is perfectly fine. And it's just what's needed in my life right now with my kids. Daycare is really expensive. Really expensive. And I think the way my relationship is, my marriage is, that we need to spend time with each other. We don't do well when we work opposite schedules. We've done that in the past. And we had, like, such a hard time in our relationship. Um, this was like when we were first married too though, but it was just really hard. We were working opposite schedules. We never spent time together, never spent family time together because we had a baby at the time and it was just really hard. Um, but um, yeah, I think just being a stay-at-home mom is what's needed right now in my life and I do love being a stay-at-home mom. I will say that I love being home. I love being the ones primarily taking care of my kids. I love being the ones um, with them all the time, feeding them, cooking for them, catering to them. I love it. Um, they're my babies, and I want to be with them all the time. So, yes, I do love being a stay-at-home mom. I never thought I would be a stay-at-home mom. Um, 
I obviously want to have my own career, but right now being home is just what's needed for my kids. Let me push over. So right now being home is just what's needed for my kids and for my family. So that's the sacrifice I was willing to take. Someone asked, what's your goals for working out? You're killing it. It's lighting. Bouncing back and forth because it's lighting. Um, but what are my goals for working out? I think the main goal of working out is to feel better. Um, I'm not on a mission to lose weight. I'm not on a mission um, to like starve myself or I'm not on a mission to lose weight. That's like, it's not it. I don't care about losing weight. I am very naturally thin, knock on wood for genetics. Um, that's not my goal. I don't care about losing weight. I want to feel strong. I want to feel good. I want to feel confident in my body. And mentally, I must say, working out has made me feel amazing. Like mentally, I feel happier and stronger and just overall like good. And working out has definitely done that. I also love working out with Cameron. I feel like it helps our relationship because we get that one-on-one -on -one time. But it's also like really freaking sexy to see your man working out. I don't know if anyone else feels like that, but I feel like that. Uh, my goals is really just to be strong and to be healthy. And yeah, I just definitely need some more muscle because I lost all my muscles. And you know, pregnancy does a lot to your body, not just like, not just like with extra weight gain or like stretchiness in the skin or anything like that, but like it really can like deflate your muscles. And like, I had nothing. And I was also breastfeeding, so like my kids were just taking all my extra vitamins and everything. They were just taking everything out of me. They are just sucking it all up. So working out, I definitely just want to feel strong and like healthy again. That's what I want to do. So next question is, how's your mental health? I know you talk about it a lot on Instagram. So I feel like my mental health is getting better with working out. My mental health has definitely, it, I feel like my mental health has definitely improved since working out. Yeah. I definitely feel like better mentally with working out. Um, but, you know, I have my days around my period. My PMDD like definitely gets me going and I'm like definitely like deep into my feels. But, yeah. Sure. I'm feeling better and I feel a little better when I finally made the decision to stop thinking about work and think about being home and staying home because I feel like a lot of my stress and anxiety and sadness came over the fact of like, I need to work, I need to work, I need to work. And so I feel better knowing that I'm not forcing myself to go back to work and it's gonna be the decision once I'm ready. Yeah. Um, but my mental health is still something I struggle with. I have really bad anxiety. Like I get really worked up. I hate going anywhere. Um, I don't like doing anything alone. Going to the gym has definitely helped me because I've been going to the gym alone some days. And I'm like really trying to break through that anxiety of, oh my God, people are watching me and I have to go to the gym by myself. Um, and I feel better. And I'm working on making me a better person and a better mom and a better friend. It starts with here. So my mental health is improving. Mental health isn't something that is fixed overnight. It takes time and it will be fixed when it's fixed. <laughs> I don't think I don't think mental health is something to take lightly. Um, I've definitely had some really, really dark times where I've literally considered ending my life and thinking I'm better off. People around me are better off without me. And it's like, it's really, it's really depressing to think like that. But. I feel like I'm in a better place right now and I feel really good. Um, but the last year has been really tough on me mentally and my, my depression definitely got the best in me in the last year. But, you know, I look at my babies and I try to stay positive and thankful and blessed that I have them. So, yeah, I'm thankful to have them and I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. The question I got quite a few times was what my goals for 2022 was. And honestly... I don't know, one of my main goals for 2022 was to have my mental health first, which meant like getting a therapist and 
focusing focusing in on my mental health and prioritizing that because I want to be again the best mom and wife and friend and person um and I know mentally I struggle a lot so I knew that was something I wanted to put a lot of focus on this year another goal of mine this year was to finally hit a thousand subscribers um we are so close so I'm like itching for it um but yeah it would be amazing if we can hit a thousand subscribers this year not that it's much but it would allow me to get monetized on youtube which i'm not on youtube for the income fyi money ain't shiz on youtube okay a lot of youtubers don't even make most of their money from like adsense or anything like that it's literally from the sponsorships and stuff um but just for the simple fact of i made a thousand and i am monetized so that's like the goal for me this year. Um, I also need to up my watch time just a little bit because I've been on YouTube for quite a few years now and I have quite a few bigger videos I've hit, like over 10,000 views. And those ones are a little older, so you need like 4,000 consistent watch hours um, in the last 12 months. So I do need to boost those just a little bit. Um, but then hit 1,000, it will be monetized this year. And that's like the goal for this year is to get monetized. Since I'm a stay-at-home mom, what else do I have to do besides my daily like household stuff and like taking care of my kids but it's nice to have like a hobby and YouTube has become my hobby I've done it for years now so it's nothing new but it's something I'm trying to just full force put myself into and I go through my spurts I know I do I go my spurts of I post a lot I don't post a lot I post a lot I don't post a lot but I successfully did vlogmas this year which not to toot my own horn but I did that um, and I was very proud of myself. I even filled in front of my mother-in-law a few times, so I did that, okay? Done. Um, I've already been on Instagram um, and TikTok doing sponsored posts and stuff like that. Um, and it's been fun and it's been great, but I've been doing that for quite a few years now, so it's nothing new for me. Um, but I would love to boost my income and my prices when I talk to brands and stuff like that. Like, I feel like not worthy enough. But I do want to start boosting up my prices a little bit, growing my Instagram a little bit. But honestly, at the end of the day, followers are just numbers. I truly rather have a smaller engagement or sorry, a smaller amount of people, but a higher engagement. I love connecting with you guys. I love talking to you guys. And I do talk to a lot of you guys through Instagram. And I do appreciate when you guys message me and talk to me through there because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel special and it makes me feel you know, like you can relate. And I try really, really hard as a person to be very raw and real. Um, cause I feel like a lot of people aren't. And I feel like a lot of people are very fake. A lot of people are very money hungry and fake. And just IG can be very intimidating because people compare themselves to these perfect people and no one's perfect. Nobody, nobody. Like everyone has problems, whether you're poor or rich, whether you're ugly or you're beautiful. We all got problems. Yeah, I that's why I try really, really hard to be very raw and real with everyone, um, especially on my social media because I want people to relate to me because I'm just like you. Um, and I always have people who are like, "Oh my God, you're so perfect! Like, how do you get everything put together? How do you do everything?" And I'm like, "You don't want to know how many times I've already cried just trying to get something like put together. Like, you know, it. No one's perfect." Every day is a new day, um, and I would like to be more present on social media because I am very, I have drastically taken a step back on Instagram and TikTok. I don't post nearly as much as I used to, um, and I just like start, like, I don't know, just get discouraged, but I'm not after the numbers. It would nice to be, see, it would nice, it would be nice to see the numbers increase, but at the end of the day, like I said, I'd rather have less people, more engagement more connections um and yeah um, I have a few more questions but I think I'm pretty much they're all kind of like the same thing a lot of them was about baby number three um military life um someone asked me how long are we gonna be here in New Mexico and we'll probably be here for another three more years um for his like, rest of his, for the rest of his last enlistment um, but it can always change. Who knows? The military is the military. Um, it all depends if Cameron's getting out, if we get another duty station. I don't, who knows? We don't know what the future holds. So, military life is wild. And I know a lot of people who 
are in it can understand and relate to it that it's uh, it's different. I'm thankful Cameron has a job. I'm thankful he is uh, thankful for his job. <laughs> That's the best I can say it. But no, I mean I'm proud. I'm very proud of him. Um, I'm my ring light is dying. Huh. Uh, but no, I am very proud of him and thankful for his sacrifices and you know writing his life away but it is what it is i'm proud of him um but yeah i think we're gonna end the video here um if you guys want another q a soon we'll do one um maybe like once every like quarter quarter well like once every like three months or something we can like sit down and do another q a thank you guys so much for watching i truly hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up it really helps my channel it really helps YouTube videos. You don't even realize how much it actually helps. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you watching my video? You're not subscribed, okay? Don't be like weird about it. Just like, subscribe and then watch my videos because then it's not as weird, you know? Um, <laughs> but if you guys enjoyed, please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.